If you live in San Francisco, Phoenix, Austin, or now in LA, you've seen these before. Waymo. With their fifth generation Waymo driver system installed on a Jaguar I-Pace electric vehicle. And it drives better than you. Maybe. In this video, I'm going to break down some examples from my drive that shows its confident decision making and what the overall experience is like. An overview of Waymo Driver and the sensors that feed into its decision making. You can break it into two areas. The top unit contains the long range sensors that are key to making this vehicle drive like a human, looking ahead and making decisions. Sensors at the belt line of the vehicle and below are more focused on obstacle avoidance. They are able to sense things that the top unit is blind to, things like obstacles, animals, those autonomous delivery thingies, important things to avoid. These are the perimeter sensors. At the front and rear is a LiDAR sensor with a camera. Upon arrival, they light up with visible light, and while driving at night, they emit infrared light to help the camera see better. The front fenders on each side have a pod packed with high-definition cameras, one facing forward and the other to the side. On any car that you see a flat piece of shiny plastic like that, there's likely a radar sensor behind it. There's also a LiDAR sensor to the side able to sense lower objects and another camera. At the back, high definition cameras on each side plus radar sensors and that rear LiDAR sensor with a camera that I mentioned earlier. Up on top, forward facing HD cameras. It looks like there are three in there two radar sensors, and these windows I've read are additional cameras behind them, not additional radar sensors. Now let's talk about the big bubble. At the top is a 360 degree LiDAR and a 360 degree vision sensing. This is more than what is needed to drive the vehicle. It's believed that this unit is collecting additional data that can be used to virtually train their system and for enhancements to their in-house mapping technology, like Google Maps on steroids. Before entering any market, they run that region and digitally map the area where these vehicles are set to operate. Let's tone the geek level down just a little bit and talk about the experience. Waymo is a robo-taxi service that has been operating without drivers for a while, for quite a while. It's still an early adopter testing, so you need to request to join. Once accepted, you download the Waymo One app, log in, and request a ride. Yeah, it's just like Uber, but without a driver. So the experience is so similar that Waymo announced that their next two markets, you'll be able to request rides using the Uber app. This is getting real, folks. LA has transitioned to a paid model. The person I was traveling with felt that it was often a little less expensive than other ride hailing services. From my experience though, I felt it was about the same price. For my ride, I wanted to get ice cream at, at night. And don't judge me. According to Google Maps on my phone, the fastest route would take the highway. LA traffic was done for the day. The route we ended up taking was on local roads because highway driving is still going through internal testing. Waymo is an SAE level four autonomous vehicle. This chart explains the different levels. Basically, Waymo has no driver operating without a safety driver as a fallback. It drives completely by itself, but it's limited to a particular operational design domain or ODD because engineers love acronyms. They're geofenced to operate within this 79 square mile area. They cannot pick up or drop off outside this area. They have other restrictions in their ODD, such as staying off the highways, that determine where and when they can operate. Upon arrival, the vehicle lights up. That big sensing bubble at the top shows part of your name, so you get in the right vehicle. You need to unlock the doors using your app so nobody else jumps in your ride. All these things are to accommodate growth in their fleet so that multiple Waymo drivers can show up at the same location and the dumb humans don't get confused. The entry experience is very nice. A voice greets you and provides some basic safety reminders like buckling up, then off you go. 
heading to Hotel Figueroa, the unveiled collection by Hyatt. Please make sure your seatbelt is fastened. For any questions, press the call support button to speak with a rider support agent. I'll talk more about the experience later, but I really want to show you this. Waymo got pulled over by the police. Well, actually, Waymo pulled over for the police, and that was super cool. Waymo vehicles have been testing audio sensing technology to make the driving experience better. So I'm riding along a road, and as the vehicle crests the hill, you'll start to hear a siren off in the distance. Only after reaching the top can you see the flashing lights. The vehicle decides to pull over, just like they taught us meatheads in driver training. Let me play that again. This time, check out the lower display to watch how it shows the path it plans to take. The blue line wiggles, but the vehicle itself moved with confidence. Eventually, it decides that the emergency vehicle is across a divided road and it proceeds forward. It's a great job. Unlike humans, Waymo driver follows the rules. It doesn't go over the speed limit. It pulls over for emergency vehicles it doesn't get distracted by its cell phone or fumble for the controls to change the music. Actually, let's talk about the controls in the vehicle. On the inside, you cannot sit in the driver's seat. That's to avoid people messing with the steering wheel and the pedals while the system is operating. Rear seat passengers do have access to some controls. You can change the music. Hopefully Waymo was playing copyright free music, otherwise YouTube's gonna flag this video. You can adjust the climate, review the route, get useful tips about using Waymo, or turn off the interior camera. Why do they have an interior camera? Here's their answer. You can see the IR emitters in these nighttime videos, so that's to help see people at night. You can stop the ride and have the vehicle pull over anytime or call customer support. I did neither. Waymo driver is confident. I keep using that word to describe it. If you look at the rear display, you can see changes in its intended path, but you never really feel any uncertainty. Waymo accelerates like a human Uber driver. There's nothing wrong with that. Just surprised how confidently it accelerates. I kind of expected it to be really slow, but it accelerates smoothly to the speed limit, but never beyond it. The displays in the vehicle provide a peek at what the Waymo driver system is sensing. Other vehicles show basic nondescript ghost cars and people that it sees. Waymo presents a much more detailed view. If you pass a pickup truck or a bus, you can see a representative image from the LiDAR sensors. It's very cool. And people passing by, they get special treatment on bikes, boards, scooters. You can see differences in how each of them are visualized. It's very impressive how the sensors can pick out people walking in the dark much better than my eyes can. You can see why many insist that these advanced LiDAR sensors are required for the highest levels of autonomy like this. In this video, we're traveling along a side street at 25 miles an hour. Up ahead, there are some people getting out of a pickup truck. Waymo is able to get by, veering slightly to the left around them but it wisely chooses to reduce its speed before passing, cutting the speed by more than half. Another example, as we come around this curve, there are traffic cones and a construction worker standing along the side of the road. We're traveling at 35 miles an hour and it drops down to 25 miles per hour as it passes. Another good choice and another of example where I did not see that guy from the back seat. You know, Waymo driver may be the best thing to happen to Jaguar in the last decade. Ouch, right? But their sixth generation vehicles are based on a Zeker minivan currently under testing. Zeker is part of Geely Automotive, a Chinese automaker. So these comfortable all electric robo taxis will be subject to increased tariffs coming into the US. 
But to be clear, the autonomous technology and data collection is all Waymo, all American. Waymo wants to expand operations and put more vehicles on the road in more markets and to expand the domain in which they operate. They will need to show with data that it is better than the average human, but unfortunately, some accidents are just unavoidable. In LA, they almost reach LAX. That's going to be a sensitive issue. Some cities tried to protect taxis and their airport routes, but over time, they allowed ride-hailing drivers to pick up there, or at least nearby. How they choose to regulate or restrict autonomous robo-taxis will be interesting to watch. For example, will they require companies to offer wheelchair-accessible vehicles? I did a video on May Mobility. You might want to check that one out. It seems like we're almost there with robo-taxis. But you know what happens next? October 10th, baby. It looks like Tesla is taking a different path with a smaller vehicle and, of course, different sensing technology. Is the Waymo driver better than you or me? Well, it doesn't get distracted or easily forget the rules of driving. From my limited experience, I was extremely impressed. And if you live in a market where Waymo operates, go ahead and sign up. It's fun once you get selected. And speaking of fun, I hope you enjoyed this video.